live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2016. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, live at Gillette Stadium here for the uh, Virtualization Technology User Group, or VTUG, it's the 10th year of the show. It's our third year here with the Cube. Happy to have on the program, uh, we've got Chris Williams, who's Cloud Architect with Kronos, and Sean Markham, who's Senior Systems Admin with IDEX Labs, uh, and both of them are newly added as co-leaders for the VTUG. Uh, guys, uh, thanks for coming on the program. Uh, your, your second time on the program, you were with me as uh, a user last yeah. year, and now, now you're both uh, co-leaders, so um, we'll, we'll start. Uh, just give us a little bit of your background and what led uh, to you becoming a co-leader. Um, so, background, uh, a lot of the things that I do at work are, are virtualization uh, using VMware. Uh, PowerShell, scripting, um, and AD, a bit of a jack of all trades in the infrastructure group. Um, what brought me into the VTUG, I've been coming to these uh, pretty much since the inception. I, I've, I've known Chris Harney for, for several years, and uh, you know, in an in a official or non-official capacity, uh, you know, I've helped you know, say, hey, maybe you guys ought to do this. And so I think he finally just got tired of that and said, well, let's put a title on you and, and, and uh, you know, Make get more out of you. So, <laughs> so now I'm 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 on the spotlight now. I guess. All right. So 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 Sean Wright, you you've known the Harneys and it yeah. just kind of got pulled in. Is it those friends always tend to do? You yeah. got to get a little more, a little more, and, yeah. and congrats. All right, yeah. Chris, uh, how about tell us a little bit about you know your role, uh, what your company do, and and how'd you end up uh, as as a co-leader of this user group? Sure. Uh, so I work for Kronos Incorporated. Um, they're the the time time and software and uh, time management services software. And uh, so I'm a, a double VCAP. I've, I've been working for them for a year and a half now, and I've been coming to the VTUG events for, for years. And uh, Chris indicated that, that my enthusiasm for, for technology and my, my drive and my sociability were, were assets that he would like to bring on. And so I, uh, I, I graciously, they, they graciously offered it to me and, and I accepted. And uh, so, so here I am. We, ha we have a lot of new ideas about things that we want to do with, our, with, uh, with the VTUG. Great, Lo love to, always when you've got these user groups, it, it's dri driven you know, for the users and by the users. Yes. So, right, the enthusiasm sometimes you kind of, you know, you, you've raised your hand without even knowing it and then <laughs> it pull you more. So maybe uh, to unpack for us a little bit, you know, what do you see as the role of the user groups? What kind of things do you think need to change going Going forward, uh, you know, and 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 how do you uh, how do you promote and get more people to, to attend and participate? Yep, absolutely. So, um, the, the the user group is just that. It's a user group. It's it's not it's not a couple of guys thinking of oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this and then and then having a bunch of people attend. Um, so, what we've been planning on doing is is making this much more iterative, much more much more of a of a back and forth conversation with the users. Um, survey monkeys uh, go going out and and making sure that the website is updated with uh, much more relevant information other than just going to register for the events. Uh, start starting to set up a newsletter, um, and and one, again having the community talk to each other and us, and and have a have a, a single place for us to share all that information. Uh, that's building the social networking and and getting the information out there that that we have information for people. Yeah, uh, so one of the things we were talking about, Chris, in the intro, and we've been you know, watching kind of the maturation last couple of years. I, I mean, the VTUG itself you know, has gone from, it's not just virtualization, cloud is, is part of it. Uh, Chris is talking, you know, DevOps is being pulled anymore. Yep. Uh, you know, Sean, maybe start with you. You talked about, you know, you, you, you handle virtualization, it's kind of a lot of your day-to-day -day job. You know, what do you see? What are your peers asking for? Mm. You know, how ready are they to kind of, you know, move uh, towards some of these technologies? and, and, and you know, give us some commentary it, on that. In my organization, we know it's there, we know it's coming, we're trying to prepare for it, but it's a bit of a moving target right now. You know, if you asked five different people, what does DevOps means to you, you probably get five different answers. Yeah. Um, you know, and then there's, there's a, a time and a place for everything. Uh, you know, DevOps isn't for your payroll system, it isn't for your, your exchange environment or your mail system. Um, so, you know, the buzzwords at, at, at the office and, and, and that all of us uh, as users are, are, are dealing with on a day in day out basis, uh, you know, trying to figure out which way to go. Um, and I think a user group will help people share those ideas and, and uh, make them a cohesive, cohesive thing. Yeah. 
Chris, Chris you, you want to sh share your thoughts on kind of the, the, the discussion of those technologies and uh, sure. kind of people's readiness uh, to, to understand them? So I, I come from it from the completely opposite side. So, right. so Kronos is a cloud company. We, we have, offer, have a SaaS offering, and so for us, um, DevOps is an integral piece of our environment. We, we, bake, we, we create our own application, we have our, our uh, cloud offering, and then you know, the, everything in between is DevOps. So, so for us, it's the, the thing that we're living and breathing every day, so we're right in the middle of, of that, that step forward into the future. A um, lot, lot of cool stuff happening over there. Uh, stuff I can't talk about, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess from, from an education standpoint, so uh, you know, I would think, you know, boy, it would be interesting for you to present, and, or at least you, I'm sure you talk to your peers, you must get a lot of questions. Oh, absolutely. As to, you know, you, you've gone there before. Uh, I mean, I, I think back to the early days of virtualization, that mm -hmm. was, everybody was, you know, writing about it, talking about it, getting really excited about it. Uh, do, 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 you, do you see some of this, what, what's getting people excited these days, is I guess, I um, ask. From my perspective, um, br bridging the gap into, into that into that DevOps realm, lear learning about the programming stuff. I mean, we, we have we have um, a, a lot of a lot of VCPs, a couple of VCAPs, on, in our, and and uh, we we are all learning how to how to bridge the gap into the application layer and how to start the automation pieces. Chris Chris spoke about automation, huge for mm -hmm. us, abs yeah. absolutely huge. Being able to cr crank out, you know. Um, a, a ton of customers every day is 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 the holy grail, and and that's exactly what we're, we're, the, the space that we're working in. Yeah, uh, I, I guess yeah. W one of the concerns people always say is, oh, this thing like automation in the cloud is that gonna you know get rid of my job? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, uh, w w what do you guys hear? You know, is are, are people excited? Are they nervous? A little bit of both? Uh, you know, when uh, when it comes to I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at my environment, you know, we're we're, we're concerned about the, the word cloud, um, but as we're getting into the cloud more and more. We're finding that, uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about our jobs. Uh, you know, there's, there's so much to do, uh, and so much to figure out, so much to explain and and share. If if anything, we're finding out that we're going to be, the, the the matriarchs or the you know the people that are going to help our company go through the cloud process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing I always look at is, if you talk to most people in IT and said, hey, if I could give you an extra hour in a day, do you have stuff to do? And they're like, oh my gosh, yes. The worry <laughs> is, okay, what if I got rid of 90% of what you were doing? Do you have stuff to do? And most people I talk to are like, oh my gosh, yes. You know, that security project I was thinking about doing, or, you know, these new applications that, uh, you know, uh, the business asked for. So, yep. you know, is, is that what you see? Uh, to kind of, you know, it, th there's, there's some shifting, but mm -hmm. a lot of it is, just the, the things that might not have been priorities, but take over what I was doing, uh, that uh, you know, automation and the like can help me actually do the job that I was hoping to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that is, that is the, the place that we're trying to get to. Once, once, once we've automated the, this, the, entire, the entire stack as, as, as we're, we're building it, that, that frees us up for the, the monitoring pieces, the DR pieces, the, the business continuity pieces. There's, there's, there's tons of stuff that, that get reprioritized based upon not having enough time because we're not automated enough. Uh, we're always looking for bright new people. We're, we're on a, a massive hiring spree right now, so yeah. I, we're, not, we're not worried about uh, losing our jobs over all this. All right, so, so Chris, you said, you said you guys are doing DevOps. Question, I'm hoping to talk to more people about this year. How often do you guys push code, you know, refresh cycles? Mm. Uh, you know, what, what does that look like in your environment today, and maybe ha has that changed over the last couple of years? It, it's, it's very nascent in our, in our environment. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of different branches um, that, that, do, that do different life cycles. We have agile. We have waterfall. Uh, there's there's um, different different timings for, for those for those different methodologies, um, it, and it's it's all in its in its initial stages right now. So so it's it's stuff that we're all working okay, on. Okay, but but it sounds like you have some parts of the organization that are pushing on more. Is it daily basis uh, versus uh, you know or no no not no. not daily. Okay, uh, I, I would say um, weekly, monthly. Okay. Yeah, like but that. but not the six to twelve months uh, of certain Correct. things or, or, or patching. Uh, so I guess the same question for you is what what's what's your refresh cycle? What's your code? Do you you know do you, do you patch on a quarterly basis? Is it a weekly basis? You know, uh, how, um, how does refresh cycle? We're in cycles? a monthly cycle right yeah. now for patching uh, and 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 uh, pushing things through the system. Um, you know. Um, my role is probably not so much DevOps. I mean, that's maybe that's why w we are leaders, is because what Chris does in his company is is, is different than what I'm doing in my com company. Sure. Uh, I'm probably more at the corporate level, at por probably more of the corporate apps, mm. um, where you don't really DevOps those. I mean, the, the words are coming into us, and we're infrastructure at our company, so 
we're, we're the ops side of the dev, um, and we're in that, that crossover transition stage where the devs are trying to figure out how to interact with us and vice versa. Right. So the, 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 uh, the whole cha food chain isn't there yet, um, but we know it's coming, um, and uh, you know, it's trying to figure out how to make that happen. Okay, great, so last question I have for both of you is, uh, are there things you guys are looking for from the users uh, or takeaways you would want them to have either, you know, not just from this event, but uh, in, in general for the VTUG? Um, we, we need to l learn to get better at communicating together. What's working, what's not working? Um, what do you want to see more of? What, what are you seeing too much of? Um, all, all of that stuff, we, we need to get feedback for. So hence, hence, the, hence the, the surveys, the, the new information on the website. Yeah. Um, we, we just need more feedback to, to how, how are we doing? Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and what do people want to see? I mean, it's a user group, so we, we need to get out into the field and ask the user, users, what do you want? Um, and then drive that, drive what we, we get from them. Okay, well yep. great. Chris and Sean, th congratulations again for <laughs> being you know, officially co-leaders of the VTUG. Uh, thanks so much for yeah. joining us and, and definitely uh, you know, recommend to everybody uh, you know, get involved in your user groups, give that feedback. Please. Uh, you know, not <laughs> saying that everybody needs to step <laughs> up and be, be the leader, but uh, you know, it, it's a community effort. Talk so, to uh, us. Uh, you know, lots of good opportunities. All right, we'll be here with lots more coverage. Uh, stay tuned, uh, theCUBE at VTUG 2016. Thanks for watching.